Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my Daily Dyer series. As usual, before I discuss what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Dyer video, I want to read to you a chapter from the Bible. Today it will be the first book of Moses called Genesis chapter 20. And Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country, and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent, and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man, for the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, Wilt thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, She is my sister. And she, even she herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart. For I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee, suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live, if thou restore her not. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. Therefore Abimelech rose early in the morning, and called his servants, and told all these things in their ears, and the men were sore afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham, and said unto him, What hast thou done unto us, and what have I offended thee? that thou hast brought on me and on my kingdom a great sin. Thou hast done deeds unto me that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said unto Abraham, What sawest thou that thou hast done this thing? And Abraham said, Because I thought, Surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will slay me for my wife's sake. And yet indeed she is my sister, she is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said unto her, This is thy kindness which thou shalt shew me. At every place whither we shall come, save me, he is my brother. And Abimelech took sheep and oxen and men servants and women servants, and gave them unto Abraham, and restored him Sarah and his wife. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before thee, dwell where it pleaseth thee. And to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given thy brother a thousand pieces of silver. Behold. He is to thee a covering of the eyes, unto all that are with thee, and with all other. Thus she was reproved. So Abraham prayed unto God, and God healed Abimelech and his wife, and his maidservants, and they bore children. For the Lord had fast closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech, because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Another fascinating example of all the persecutions Abraham had to overcome in his life. And what amazes me is how truthfully written it is. Uh, you can see here, Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. Then God, But God comes to Abimelech and said, this is actually Abraham's wife. And that Abimelech has to make a decision. Now, it says in Genesis 27, Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. And he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know thou that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. So he has to make a decision, right then and there, whether he wants the grace of God, or he wants to suffer God's wrath. And Abimelech chooses wisely. He chooses the grace of God. He chooses to bless, uh, not to, 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 give, to show kindness to Abraham. Um, this comes in contrast, uh, I believe, with, with the Pharaoh. Um, when Abraham meets the Pharaoh here, and the Pharaoh also wants to take uh, Sarah, who is told by Abraham to say that, he is, that she is Abraham's sister. The Egyptians, excuse me. It says in Genesis 12, 12. Therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see thee, 
that they shall say, This is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will save thee alive. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for thy sake, and my soul shall live because of thee. And when Abraham, and it came to pass that when Abram was coming to Egypt, saw Abram at this time, and Sarai, the Egyptians beheld the woman, that she was very fair. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her, and commended her before Pharaoh. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her, and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house, and entreated Abram well for her sake, and he had sheep, and oxen, and he asses, and men servants, and maid servants, and she asses, and camels. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. And Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Why didst thou not tell me that she was thy wife? And that's a, then a, and why saidest thou she is my sister? So I might have taken her to me to wife. Of course, I believe I believe at this time they would take many wives, but I'm not 100% sure. Now there, therefore, behold thy wife, take her, and go thy way. And Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him, and they sent him away, and his wife and all that he had. Amazing. Amazing dichotomy. So, here, Abimelech does good in the eyes of the Lord. So we'll definitely keep an eye on Abimelech, the king of Gerar, throughout the gospel. I'm not sure, if, of course, if I'll hear from him again. It's been a while, um, over a year now, since I've read the Old Testament. So um, I'm definitely excited you know, that I'm going back here and learning the lessons you know, again. And it's absolutely fascinating. This is the second time Abraham must face this persecution, and he handles it like a man. You know, him and Sarai both, they're on the same page. You know, that they serve the will of God. And I, I just love the way he says, the God says, for he is a prophet. You know, and, and that quote, the quote that Abram gives, discussing the Lord's judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah, where he says, he is but dust, and that he is essentially implying that he is no one to question the will of God, who is not dust. That the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are different than the rest of mankind. Hence, why... Um, in the seven levels of, of male understanding. I want to give you the exact quote now, actually, of, of how I describe divinity, of how I view divinity. Level one. The divinity, the Lord, Lord Jesus Christ and Lord Nair and White, the Godhead, infinitely and incomparably more powerful, great, and wise than the rest of this hierarchy combined. Everything below us we do not view as less we know it. And then I go on to say, you know, how this is not meant to be hurtful, but rather to show that, you know, that Jesus still nevertheless cares about mankind and whatever level, you know, he may fall into. Divinity, the exact word is divinity. Uh, when people ask who is the greatest, there's no doubt. Is the Trinity, of course, I believe it's myself, Lord Nair, and wide the line of God, the one true God. Amen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, you know, that... That understanding from Abraham, uh, and then the second time he has to endure this persecution, and he comes out looking like a man again. Uh, it, it's not a joke, so it, absolutely amazing. Yeah, because this is the second time. Think about it: that someone is willing to take his wife from him, and potentially even kill him, because you know it doesn't. It, it, it because there's not enough of a physical consequence to Abimelech that they that they fear either the thoughts, words, or actions of doing this to Abraham directly. Um, so that really, it, uh, it, it goes up to show you what Abraham went through in his life as a patriarch. And yeah, so that, that's, that's, it's just a credit to him. Amen. Now, as I transition over to what I have achieved since yesterday's Daily Diet video. Since yesterday's Daily Diet video, I uploaded and scheduled my legs workout from 4 13 22. I put it in scheduled my I published my daily diet video from 4 13 22. I worked my software developer job. I continued work and getting set up to move into my apartment. I wrote chapter 15 of the gospel according to Lord Naren White. I completed some initial investing work. I worked at my core. I created the video for chapter 15 of the final testament, the gospel according to Lord Naren White. And now I've created this daily diet video. And now, with no further achievements since yesterday's Daily Dive video, I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, 
and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care and thanks again.